What is going on, Governor's Just Cool here, and today, we're going to do a live stream. That's right, we're going to live stream some barbarian hunting. We've got a crazy video coming out, probably tomorrow, if it finishes, uh, involving an insane assault on a pass. And it's taking so long to edit and work with and put music to, uh, because it is literally over, I think, an hour of footage, even after I've edited out a whole heck of a lot of it and cut out all the parts where I'm communicating and coordinating. It's pretty nuts. Uh, so anyways, hopefully you'll find this video helpful today. If you do, please do like and subscribe. Today is the time. It is truly one of the few times where you should spend a lot of action points. Uh, and I might spend every single one that I have hunting barbarians. Uh, I'm just going to find some to walk towards because apparently I've slayed like every barbarian nearby. Jeez, I might have to just wait for some to respawn. Okay, there we go. Um, yes, we're hunting barbarians right now because there are two events going on simultaneously. And when this sort of thing happens, where you get just insane bang for your buck, it is totally worth using all your resources. In this case, on my kingdom, and you have to pay attention if this is true on yours, we have both a strategic reserve event, which rewards special chests and also uh, has a ladder for getting Cleopatra sculptures, as well as Lohar's Trial. And Lohar's Trial offers necklaces that also have pretty sweet goodies contained within them. For me... The hard part during the, this event is actually not, you know, finding a bunch of high-level barbarians to kill. I actually don't even care so much about the level. Um, I just want to kill as many as I possibly can. Now, there are some weird tricks you could do that, I don't know, where you, like, spawn in a bunch of low-level barbarians and you use AoE commanders and... Maybe we'll play around with that a little bit in this video, uh, since I maxed out Sun Tzu and got his expertise skill recently, but but we'll see. We're, we're just going to hunt barbs and answer your questions, and, you know, there's also this wheel event going on right now, the Wheel of Fortune. We'll talk about how to optimize for that once we got a few more people on the stream. So we got some folks coming in now. Mateus, what's going on? Inc., hey. Illa Gamer, what's going on? Fernando. Uh, Dugay asking, question bro, if you farm inside other alliance, where do tax go? Um, if you farm within another alliance flags, I don't, I don't think there's a special tax that goes anywhere. Hey, Chiskul, do some tile hitting on your enemies. Ha! Yeah, no warring right now. Not, not now. Don't worry, I have 10,000 action points. Wow. The wheel is a trap? Well, we'll talk about the wheel in a minute. Um, what's my opinion on KVK? Uh, you know, sketchy. Uh, I, if I had to guess, would say, and I'm just guessing, that Kingdom vs. Kingdom maybe is going to come out in like the March, April time frame, if I had to guess. Uh, Alliance Battlegrounds, I hope, are an outlet in which we can smash other people's armies and not suffer deaths and not suffer resource loss. That is my hope for what Alliance Battlegrounds are so that we get to use these commanders that we love playing with and not have to worry or feel bad about suffering loss. And I think that'll be really exciting and actually prepare people for KVK in a way that they're probably not right now. How is the drop rate determined for strategic reserve? Man, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you how that worked. I'm not actually sure. It seems like there's diminishing returns. Early in the day, you get a bunch, and later in the day, you get less. What's the barbarian spawn rate, um, says Minan. You know, that's a good question. My experience is like every five or ten minutes, some more barbs pop in, but I don't actually know exactly how it works, if it has to do with um, when you kill them or if it's just got a spawn timer periodically. You can see, by the way, if I look at one of these barbs, that it does have a, a despawn timer. So, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, you guys came from Spooby. Spooby Raid. Wait, is Spooby streaming right now? Is that a thing? Oh, jeez. Now I feel bad. <laughs> now I feel bad. Oh, Spooby, I love you. You're my fave. No, I'm, I'm like way behind. Um, I have spent the last 
72 hours either preparing for or waging intense intense war and um man it i mean it, it was savage i'm so far behind on creating videos normally i have my video out like i don't know more than 12 hours ago for today <laughs> so anyways we're doing a stream instead and i'm not paying attention i'm letting my lohar get so far ahead he's going to kill this guy before my other ones get there uh-oh, sketchy. Your alliance got destroyed in Kingdom 159, and you jumped to 192. Well, you're in the you're in the number two alliance. Oh, you were in the number two alliance in 159. Wow. Yeah, that's tough, man. I mean, I I don't know. I get that it's a war game, but the the penalties of just like living on your kingdom are steep if there's not peace. And you don't control who's on your kingdom. And you can't leave your kingdom. And you can go to a different zone, but like they can hunt you down. So I don't I don't know how I feel about all that, honestly. I don't know how I feel about all that. My hope is that, man, this walk is forever, but it's the nearest barb. No, there's got to be something else. I got to just be looking the wrong way. My hope is that Alliance Battlegrounds like tame people's bloodlust. You know, some people say, oh, it's a war game. It's, you know, it's not a farming game. And let me tell you. Oh, that's that's even further. <laughs> that was that was even way worse. Jeez. Rivers, man. All right. Yeah, some people say, you know, it's a war game, not a farming game. And I'm like, guys, like you got to farm resources in order to get strong. Like it's both a farming game and a warring game. And both of them are rewarding. I don't know what what do you guys like more the warring aspects or the farming aspects? What do you guys like more? I I found war to be some of the most exhilarating rise of civilization experiences that I've had to date, but they are also terrifying. Um they're also quite terrifying. Let's see. Oh, and by the way, when I say terrifying, um tomorrow's video is going to have, I think, well over 6 million, million, million deaths featured for the kingdom. Insane. And that's just one small part of the war that took place over this weekend. Um, Joseph's asking, what do you recommend to get tons of legendary? Oh, man, the legendary universal sculptures. You know, that's tough. Um. I generally like to save speed ups and to try to win events that uh, involve like only building or only uh, tech. So, for instance, I got second place, and I could have easily got first place, but I was um, I was unable to play the game in the sort of final hours of this event. But I got. Let's see if I still maybe have the message. Oh no, I definitely don't at this point, <laughs> and I didn't favorite it. Um, oh well, maybe. Oh yeah, we should open this uh, trophy. One of my alliance members gave it to me. There we go. Here it is. Um, I got second place in the Founder of Civilizations event, which um, I you can see the I was off by like thirty thousand power for building in this event. I so could have easily got first. So like all I had to do was be online near the end of the event, so he couldn't snipe me at the end. And there you go. But that's a like if you can win one of those events, that's your best bet. And like, I actually don't think it's Mightiest Governor. Mightiest Governor, like, the people who spend a ton of money in the game, they're just going to win. So, I, like, I would not spend your crucial resources trying to win Mighty Governor. Um, <laughs> war, for sure, is better than barb farming. Yeah. Well, this is an exciting time to be barb farming, and uh, I'll show you why. So, let's see here. We'll claim all these goodies. Okay. So we'll pause all these guys for a second. Let's actually find where we're going next and then open some loot. Who doesn't like opening loot? Oh, good. They all respawned. So you saw that didn't take all that long. And it looks like the despawn timer is six hours. So that's kind of interesting. All right. We'll send you. We'll send you. And we'll send you. And we're going to burn all our action points. But check this out. So just in the small time that I've been playing, literally like... I don't, uh, maybe since five minutes before I started streaming, I've gotten 124 supply boxes and 159 bone necklaces. Oh, baby. Now, the supply boxes are cool. Let's just open all those. 
resources, some amount of arrows of resistance, speed ups, and keys, which is sweet. All this is amazing for an activity that was worth doing anyways. But these Lohar bone necklaces, this is the magic. I want, I want you to see how many arrows of resistance we get. 159 of these that we opened and 262 arrows of resistance. This, my friends, is how you level up your watchtower. This is why farming barbarians during a time like this that's giving you so many goodies is so worth doing. Yes, yes, and more yes. This is the time. Uh, can I please talk about the Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, we'll definitely talk about Wheel of Fortune. Dude, my Lohar Minamoto cavalry unit is too fast. It is killing things before my other guys even show up to the party. Not cool. Not cool. My Lohar Minamoto are pretty busted. Um, so here's my Minamoto. And he's the secondary to Lohar, who's looking pretty good. Rocking out this talent build over here. Honestly, like at this talent, like I don't know when I'm ever below 50%. I guess when I'm doing the Karak ceremony, that'll happen. But otherwise, it just doesn't. Um, in your kingdom, Kyle, someone already has 35 million points from training troops. Wow. Do I think Charles Martel would prefer to go by Charlie or Chuck? Probably Chuck. No, Charlie. He looks like a Charlie. I mean... What does that even mean? He looks like a Charlie. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, let's look at Mighty Governor on my kingdom. Uh, oh, I'm number two for Barbarians. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, I was 50 for troop training. Oh, B! You monster! 43 million. Holy smokes. I just gotta look at that again. Wow. Wow, B, my hero. Oh, champion. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Echo Gaming in the house. What's going on, my friend? So good to see you. So good to see you. I don't know if you all saw, Echo and I did a stream jointly the other day. It was pretty sweet. I actually had a lot of fun doing that. And Echo's had me on his channel a number of times. It's been a lot of fun. You should check his channel out. A lot of fun stuff there. And <laughs> you see me on there a not small amount, too. Noodle Eater, thank you for streaming. You're very welcome, my friend, and your name is awesome. Um, Eldon is asking, what do I think about the new civilizations that have been revealed? You know, I haven't actually talked at all about the new civilizations that have been revealed because I've been so obsessed over the last 72 hours trying to wage war effectively. Uh, and let me tell you, it is not easy uh, leading and coordinating so many alliances and so many people, and that's not a complaint, but I focused a lot on Minamoto. Let's, can I show him? There we go. On Minamoto and Cao Cao with the intention of focusing on open field combat, and I cannot do open field combat. I am spending more time coordinating, pointing out where people should be going, who should be doing what, than anything else. It's unbelievable. Um, it's really quite remarkable. So I don't know. We'll see. Echo, you have like eight videos coming out with me in them. Nice. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Joseph Panam, a moderate spender. Who would you pair with Charles Martel for garrison? Richard the First. Slam dunk. Your Charles Martel is 5541. You monster. You monster. If not Charles Martel, you got a couple options that are really good. You could go um, with, well, I mean, if you're garrison, it depends what you're garrisoning. Like it. If you're garrisoning your city, right, like you're going to have a mixture of troops probably, I would assume. And if you have a mixture of troops, you don't need to worry about pairing with like another infantry commander. So when we look at Charles Martel pairings, I mean, like you could be looking at a generalist like Boudicca. Better would probably be Joan of Arc if you think you're up against a single target. I like... I like Sun Tzu against a swarm. I don't actually know whether or not his fourth skill here actually works in conjunction with Charles Martel's first skill. This increases damage, and Charles Martel says it's a damage factor on the shield. So I would think they actually align, and that's a pretty sweet combo. Um, let me find more barbs, and we'll talk more garrison combos. I actually... I have a lot I want to talk about with garrisons, but I want to get some clarifications of my understanding 
on how garrisons work before I talk about it. I got I got actually a lot to talk about. A whole heck of a lot to talk about. Um, let's just look at a couple, a couple other options with Martel. Uh, I really like Pelagius for city defense. Like, really, I, I actually am more and more very obsessed with, with him. Um, rage restoration, damage dealt. There's no movement speed here, which means all of those points, skill points, are worth uh, very worthwhile. Uh, theoretically, it says increases garrison and watchtower attack, which means, like, yeah, this guy's really good in a city. And healing. I, I love everything that's going on with, with uh, Pelagius. And I think Ulji Mundok's really solid as well. Ulji Mundok is really good against a swarm, potentially, because uh, you got a lot of guys hitting you, then you're going to get your damage boosted a whole heck of a lot, which is really good. Ugh. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to kill that before my other guys arrive. Sketchy, your Minamoto's at 5535. Five, five. That's like living the dream. That's very strong. Uh, any tips for getting speed ups? You know, I I don't know the best place to get speed ups. Uh, someone else asked me that question recently. Wow, dude, this Lohar and Minamoto unit is just, they are just monsters. Like that was a level 25 barb that they just slaughtered. Like it's nothing. All right, I got to send these guys. And now I got to actually watch the time. <laughs> they get there faster. They slay it before everyone else gets there. Holy moly. Austin, uh, you're in an alliance with one of our members' alts. That's amazing. Corey, I recommend against that wheel. Every item besides the three sculptures is a net loss. Here's why I like the wheel. Here's why I like the wheel. It, and it's that if you spin it 10 times, you get five legendary commander sculptures, which is about 10,000 gems of value. So. But, but I would go no further. And we'll talk about exactly how you do that probably in a bit. Bro, you're... <laughs> yes, Joseph. My Minamoto is eating those barbarians like breakfast. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Actually, we'll kill this 24 first. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a pretty high-powered barbarian killing squad. And like we're just going to kill with Abandon. We're going to kill with a band. We're going to spend action points because, like, look at all these goodies we're getting. We got 23 battle reports and 23 items we're collecting. Sweet. And I guess not all those were battle reports, but whatever. Is Boudica good for PvP? Boudica is a generalist, and in that way she is good. But she also ends up being probably the first person I try to kill. Um, and that is because she, like, doesn't – like, she's good, but she doesn't do anything special. Right, so she does a lot of everything, which is excellent. But let me give an example, and and, may, and maybe I feel like I would start to steer players more towards CPO, um, because you know what the counter is to CPO. Do you know what the counter is to CPO? You just walk away. But the good news is, if you're like a free to play player, um, you don't want people hitting you anyways. So CPO seems like a really good commander to like run around the field and to be able to do stuff and to have some survivability. And I actually am more and more liking that plan, especially if you pair CPO with someone that maybe does some buffing or debuffing. Um, so let me let me show you why I think the counter to CPO is to just walk the other way. So CPO's first skill reduces his damage taken and increases counterattack damage, which means like. Hitting him is not that great compared to all the other places you could do damage. And this next one is whenever he is attacked, CPO has a 10% chance to increase his troops' attack. Whenever he's attacked. So if you see a CPO, just don't attack him. Kill literally anyone else that you feel like killing. And that is why I worry about Boudica in open field. Because if I see a Boudica, I'm killing her. Because she has no defensive capabilities whatsoever to make her more survivable. I mean, she's got some healing, but yeah. Um, okay, next question. Oh, man. There we go. Uh, all right. Bad boy, what's going on? Bloody Timo. Do I think Sun Tzu's garrison skill? Garrison skill is the best of all the epic commanders. Well, I think actually that's a really interesting question, and I want to answer that fully. So we're going to look at the epic commanders. We're going to talk about the garrison skills. And like, look, this stuff is really relevant. Um, 
if your city is attacked, you want to have a garrison commander. Um, and optimally, you just don't want your city to be attacked at all, <laughs> unless you really are one of the, the powerhouse players. So let's talk about garrison commanders for just a second. And we'll just look <coughs> at the epic tier. So this is garrison counterattack damage on Kusunoki, which means if you're getting swarmed, this is really good. If we take a look at Sun Tzu, this is uh, damage taken, which is good if it's a swarm or not. Actually, this is really good. Actually, this is really good. I actually really like that a lot. Because if you're getting attacked by multiple enemies, then it reduces the damage you're, being, you're taking from all those enemies. Now, this is attack. This is interesting because it's attack, but it's attack to both the garrison and the watchtower. So it's sort of like 14 percentage points of boost rather than 7. But you only attack one enemy with your active skills, which means that if you only have one enemy that you're fighting, like Pelagius is really, really good, but not as good if there's a bunch of enemies. Uh, let's see, the garrison skill for Herman. See, this is the same. The same. Garrison and Watchtower attack, those are two different entities, and that's very good. And then Wilji Mundok, garrison defense. Huh. This is only 5%. I gotta, I gotta look at my barb hunters, but we gotta talk about why that's only 5%. What's going on there? <laughs> we got to figure out why that's weird. There's probably a reason. It might have to do with its positioning being like the second skill versus the third skill. I don't know. That's now I'm intrigued. More barb killing so we can open sweet, sweet loot. And then let's see here. So what's going on here? Ulji Mundok is only 5% and it's the second skill. Whereas... Sun Tzu, it's the second skill. The garrison, the damage taken by the garrison by 7%. And this is, oh, this is garrison defense. Still, though, is defense that much better? Are they saying defense is just that much better? That's really interesting. That's super interesting. I didn't know that. Is it actually better? I don't know. But they're weighting it as if it's better. All right, 28 seconds, 42 seconds. Dude, you're so slow. All right, you sit still for a minute. When you send three times the armies, do you get triple the bone necklaces? Um, you generally get rewards for each one that hit. So it's not exactly triple because each one is like an independent calculation to determine whether or not you get something. But for each one, you get all the goodies. Uh, let's see. Has the war ended? I hope it will. Uh, I'm. We're going to have a negotiation to talk about that. I will say that we are in a peace process with HK7. My officers were leading that, uh, and my sincere hope is that we will have the honor of uh, calling HK7 our allies. They are profoundly exceptional in combat, uh, and I would love nothing more than to be their allies. They have been very mighty as an opponent, and I would love to have them as a mighty friend. Okay, defense for Martel or infantry for an all-infantry march? That is a fascinating question. We're going to talk about Martel in a second here. Uh, let me march my guys to this barb, and then we'll have t apparently two minutes to chat about that. We're going to wait a second for this guy to get there. So the question is, for Charles, Charles, wow, I can't talk, Charles Martel, for Charlie, <laughs> uh, should he be defense or should he be infantry? Depends on what you're trying to do. If you're defending a flag or a fortress, you want to be defense or a pass. If you are defending your city, you want to be garrison. If you are, I guess, doing open field and you don't have a full march of infantry, then you would rather be defense. And otherwise, infantry, I think, is what you want to be doing in open field. What do I know about the new civilizations? Honestly, just that they are coming. I would bet that each one, well, actually, I don't know. I would bet that each one has an epic and a legendary, but honestly, like, I, they should add some more blue commanders. They should add some more green commanders. 
Like not all, not everything they need to announce should be epic and legendary. Even though I'd kind of like love to see more epics and legendaries. Um, I save my civilization swap token, by the way, Pranav, specifically for these new civilizations when they'd come out, just in case I'd want to swap to them. Why am I using Cao Cao as the first, uh, or the primary instead of Minamoto? That is because right now my Minamoto has a PvP build. I've got a nuking-related PvP build I'm trying out with a lot of rage regeneration and speed. But, um, so I have no peacekeeping talents. So I'm, I have Minamoto as the secondary, and Cao Cao becomes my fort commander. So normally I'm using Cao Cao to rally forts. And he just rallies forts all day long. I really wish I had quick study right now. Um, I, I just don't normally use him for this task. I, I honestly don't think he's the best primary, by the way, for rallying forts. I would much rather have Minamoto be the primary. But because my Minamoto is stronger and because I optimize for PvP, Minamoto is set for PvP. Hunting barbarians. All right. More of these guys to kill. More of these guys to kill. This is way more fun with you guys. This is way more exciting. Hey, Chiskul, what do you think about Ulji, Mundok, and Boudicca full infantry to counter calves? Sure. Uh, I, I like that combo. I like what's happening there. Yeah, I like what's, what's happening there. I think if you're going like on a hard cavalry counter, you probably want two infantry commanders. But, I mean, directionally, it's correct. I'm a monster, bro. You're over there with your maxed everything. <laughs> maxed, Richard, basically. I'm scared more of you than my teacher. Lol. Yeah. Um, I I pick a commander, and I invest, invest a lot in them. And then I pick another commander, and I invest a lot in them. The only reason that I did not max Cao Cao is because of this war. This war caused me to switch gears and focus on Richard I, because I wanted a garrison commander. Um... I wanted to make sure that if I had to defend a flag, and I did, by the way, that I had the absolute best possible situation I could create for our alliance with our defenders. So I switched gears. Now, it turns out that perhaps the max Cao Cao would have been a better choice, but that is a different story entirely, and I'm going to talk about that a whole heck of a lot on another day. There's actually a lot to talk about there. Let's pop a more of these potions. Yes. Sweet. All right. Cruising. We're cruising. Um, I think Ulji's defense bonus even works with a secondary commander, not like Sun Tzu's when it says serving as the garrison commander. Well, now you have my attention. Now you have my attention. What? What? Ulji Mundok. No, it's, this is when serving as the garrison commander. Um, but I will point out that Sun Tzu is kind of interesting. Sun Tzu, on the other hand, he says, this one, increase troops, troop damage reduction by 10% and increase infantry unit health by 10%. So this, to me, I'm inclined to believe is a flat damage reduction for all units and infantry health increase. But you know, you could probably figure that out by looking in the logs to see. All right, let's pause these troops for a second. Let's pause these troops. Where the heck are we going? Let's send them there. And then we're going to do a wheel event. We're going to do the wheel event. We're going to talk all about how we optimize the wheel. Because I think it's worth doing the wheel. But I think it's only worth doing the wheel to the point where you get like the five or however many legendary sculptures that you're going to get. And then you stop. That's how I've always done it. And I, yeah, that's how I've always done it. Uh, how do you build a talent tree for Charles Martel? We talked about that a little earlier. Let me just show you my Richard the First. I would probably do this a little bit differently. I talked about this in my last video for garrison defense specifically. Um, but if you're building a garrison commander, I'm very happy with what I've done here. I'm very, and, I, and this is level 60. I, I mean, like, garrison defense was needed, so I maxed out my, my guy. It's, that's. That was what I did. Now, I have no new info on the new civilizations, unfortunately. All right. 
Nice. When does the Spend Gems event come out? Dude, if I had the answer to that question, um, I don't think they're going to release it anymore. I think the More Than Gems event, which I've been talking about for ages and I've been saving my gems for, it was too good to be true and they're not going to do it again. And I think people figured out the secret, which is you just save your gems until that event. And I think what they were probably, and I'm just guessing, right? But if I were a developer, I'd be trying to create an event that encouraged someone to buy gems um, rather than get someone to spend the gems they already have. So I'm inclined to believe that that event was so good that we won't see it for a very long time, if ever again. Which is a bummer, but I think might be the reality of the situation. I think that might be the reality. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Look at this. So we killed a bunch of barbs and got a bunch of goodies. And we'll do this all night. We'll do this all night because, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I probably have another 25 minutes of doing this together as a group. But I'll pick it back up tomorrow because the watchtower is essential. and. I've talked about the Watchtower a lot in some of my other videos. I need a lot of these arrows of resistance, and there's literally no better time that I know of than right now to farm arrows of resistance. So I'm going to spend every little bit of action point I have, possibly every action point potion I have, because if war is in fact around the corner, I want to convert every single resource I have into uh, actual stuff I can use in war. So all these action point potions are a real feel bad when we're at war because what does an action point potion do me in war? Literally nothing. Okay. Uh, apparently Ottoman is going to have female cavalry. That, that'd that be cool. That's an interesting idea, Christopher. Uh, do I think Ottomans are going to have research bonuses? No clue. When are they buffing El Cid? El Cid's an interesting commander. I don't know. They may not buff him. Here, here's how I would handle this. If I thought El Cid was underpowered, what I would do as a developer is I would release another commander that when paired with El Cid makes them just bananas together. That That's how I would probably fix it. I would just create a new pairing that is so good that you don't feel like you're missing out on anything. You think El Cid's just fine. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the wheel. Let's talk about the wheel. You get one free spin. You get one half off spin every day. And the five spin is way better than doing full price single spins. So we're going to hit free. And all right. I think that's possibly not one of the better items on the wheel, but that's okay. And we're going to spin once for 325. <laughs> Gold is the one thing that I needed the least. Now we spin five times. What do we got? Wood. Legendary sculpture. Feels good. Star. Well. <laughs> uh, speed ups. I like speed ups. More speed ups. All right. I need speed ups. Need a lot of speed ups. So now we need to do a half off spin tomorrow and a half off spin the day after that. That's two more. So I think we need to do one full price spin. So we'll do that. And then we'll, you know. For less than 10,000 gems, I think. I don't know. I'm, I didn't actually do the math. We're going to get all of these goodies and 10 legendary, or no, five legendary sculptures. I don't know. Seems good. Uh oh. Yeah. I don't, I don't love the language choices. Don't love the language choices. Um, all right. We're going to keep hunting barbs. We are going to keep hunting barbs. Okay. I am eager for the point where there will be language filters uh, automatically applied. <laughs> I've seen some weird stuff in all the chats. All right. So we're going to keep claiming these rewards. Feeling really good about this. And in this short time that we've been playing together, what are we up to now? 19, so you can see the diminishing returns on these supply boxes is real. We're getting less of them than we were before, but we're still getting a lot of bone necklaces. Look at those arrows of resistance. And this is why we're here. This is why we're here. And it's a little bit of a grind, I will admit, but 
at the end of that rainbow is a watchtower that is savage. And that is what we're after. City defense, exceptional watchtower. And I guess we have like one more army we can send. So we should be gathering right now. I like stone. I don't want to do too much gathering while we're on camera. Oh, but I, hey, I got my stone gathering crew lined up. That's perfect. Ooh, and look at all these barbs lined up. This is the dream. This is the dream. So I don't know. What did you think of my wheel spin there? It was probably just okay. Not so amazing. Uh, the alliance rankings? Yeah. Let me uh, slay these barbs, and we'll look at the alliance rankings in the kingdom. And uh, you can get a peek at that. You can get a peek at that. And we're just going to recharge our action points here. Bada boom. Crank that up. Inky, you would add Russia with Catherine the Great. Yeah. But dude, Eldun, it, or Eldon or Eldun? I had a friend who their gamer tag was Eldun, and they it was just noodle backwards. So I apologize that I default to calling you Eldun. Um, but I agree that barb farming is just relaxing. Love getting that loot. All right, rankings, 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 rankings. I am currently number one for gathering, and that's even without queen or saint, but I've not been... I had it for a little while, to be fair, um, and I just don't have time to gather recently. It's been so insane. It's just been war. It's been a madhouse. I didn't gather for like two or three days. It feels weird. <laughs> I spent so many resource tokens. Uh, can you share some of those XP boosters? Dude, um, you bring up an interesting point when you say XP booster, because I realize now I'm I'm doing like a cardinal sin of barb farming, which is why do I not have an experience rune? Is there an experience rune on the map? Let's find out. March speed, 15%. I mean, I should even just have 15% march speed. Honestly, honestly, I'm going to go get that. I got to refill this army anyways. She's she's getting a little low. I'm going to pick up the march speed. Cody Z, what's going on? Albin, hey, Chiscool, cool. Do you think YSG will ever come out to New Kingdoms or to Rock make him unavailable? I'm sure he's going to come out. He's going to hit the wheel, right? I don't know. Even if he doesn't hit the wheel, like, they want they want people to use the commanders. So he'll be out eventually. He'll be out eventually. We'll wait patiently and we'll hang on to enough gems in order to be able to pick him up the second he comes available. They need to add USA to this game. I don't think that was one of the original civilizations they had in mind for this time period. Oh, no. I led with Boudicca. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Spooby! Oh my goodness, Spooby HD in the house, VI freaking P. What's going on, dude? S Spooby, I apologize. Apparently, I started streaming when you were streaming, and I feel really bad now. I feel super bad. Because I would have watched your stream instead of streaming. Is it possible to test out higher tier troops versus lower tier troops at equal power? For example, 25,000 cavalry. Versus 100,000 T1 mixed troops. I don't think I could test it out right now, but I think it might be an interesting-ish thing to test. I think it would be interesting to test. USA with Abraham <laughs> buffs peacekeeping and nuking. <laughs> well, that was funny. That might win funniest comment. Can you recommend the best pairing commander that I usually use? Um... Depends on the context, but yes, I've got a couple pairs that I really, really like. I really like Minamoto and Cao Cao, and honestly, I this is a deceptively good combination of Richard the First with Kusunoki, and Kusunoki's got some AOE. Kusunoki's got some good damage. Um. And importantly, Kusunoki clears all status effects that are on you, which seems really good. I, I would say a better pair is actually Richard the First and Pelagius. That's like really, really strong. Would recommend that for garrison defense, to be clear. Uh, best duo for open field combat might be 
Richard the First and Charles Martel, but I also really like uh, Minamoto and Sao Tao. I also really like Minamoto and Sao Tao. Show my research. Now that's an interesting idea. Yeah, let's show my research and let's talk a little bit about what's needed for tier five troops. Does someone know? <laughs> no, we'll look. We'll look. I'm not actually sure offhand, but I have a sense. And I, I do need to talk about that and look into that a little more. So we're going to send our guys off to hunt some barbs, and then we'll go look at my tech. Is Richard with uh, with 5111 with Wolji good? Yes. That's great. I used my Richard the First as a 5111 for a very, very long time. In fact, the only reason I started spending sculptures on him uh, is because there was a war right around the corner, and I thought I might have to defend something. So let's go look at the tech. Let's go look at our tech. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to train. There can never be a time where I'm not training something, actually. Let's even, let's upgrade these guys. Let's get rid of those. Okay. Let's look at the tech. Here's the, f the financial or economic tech. I invested a lot in this because for the rest of the time I'm playing the game, I'm going to be getting returns. If the kingdom was not at war, I still would be investing in this financial tech. Because I think it's just insanely good. I have shifted my focus entirely over to military tech because uh, we're at war-ish. I hope there will be peace. I sincerely hope there will be peace. But I saw that war was around the corner potentially, and I started working on my tech. So there you have it. Let's go check these guys out. Oh, they're walking back to the city now. Uh, instead of walking back to the city... What if instead you guys killed this barbarian? What if instead you did that? What about Tomoe or Tomoe? I don't know. I've I, Tomoe was a great early game commander, and since then, I don't know. Haven't done much with it at all. Oh, you're talking about commander attractiveness, not effectiveness. Noted. Just started playing the game with about four days ago, watching your channel. Awesome. Got off work about three hours ago. Good luck with the vids. Hey, man, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I think there are female gamers out there, and there's plenty of them. In fact, um, well, I won't out anybody for being a female gamer, but I'll say this. There's plenty of them, and they're quite talented uh, at playing the game. They're quite talented at playing the game. Um, and, I mean, of course they would be. All it takes is dedication and practice, and you can go to just about anything. Hey, Chisco, what's the effect of surrounding an army? Uh, glad you asked. The effect of surrounding an army is uh, that they have a damage increase. They take more damage. I saw that in a battle report, and I was like, oh, I think it was like 5%, but that might have to do with the number of armies. They meant female commanders still. All right, well, apparently y'all are talking about female commanders. But like, I don't know, I spend a, a not small amount of time thinking about like how do we create an environment that is comfortable for everyone and, you know, certain language choices I think interferes with that pretty significantly. And uh, it is my hope that in the time that I am working with Legion. Like, we create a very inclusive environment. What's my favorite commander? Hmm, it's probably Minamoto, honestly. I want it to be Cao Cao, but I just, I don't know. I think I need to use his mobility tree, and then I would fall in love with him more. I think that's what's going on. Oh, we finished a quest. Uh, what was that quest? Oh, yeah, building siege units. Noted. Noted. Oh, we need to use five tomes of knowledge. May as well just do that real quick. Almost doesn't matter. I when when I have that quest for five tomes of knowledge, I do five of the lowest ones and just call it a day. Collect my quest rewards. Voila. Uh I think Chisquel is more attracted to Richard. I mean Have you seen that dude's axe? Do you prefer salmon or tuna? Now I don't even know what's happening in the chat. Minamoto is amazing. Minamoto and Joan, I mean, they're fine. Not my first choice, but also quite fine. 
uh, Infamous Gaming Esports. Hey, bud, been watching your videos with you and Echo. Been playing for 56 days. Now City Hall 21. Awesome. 6.2 million power. Sweet. Oh, got to pop some more potions. All right. We're just cruising around killing barbs. And you guys just took the Lost Temple. Nice. Best garrison commanders for free-to-play players? It's going to be Epics. It's going to be Epics and... Hmm. I really like Minamoto and Sun Tzu as a combo. They got a lot going on. Who else do I think is a good combo? I mean, Ulji is fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I'd focus on the, the commanders that have the garrison skill. All right. More barbs? Oh, yeah. We're already going that direction. Ooh. All right. Four packs. Feel good about that. Chisk will be the totem king. I don't know what that means, but I'll take I'll take it. Hey, Chisk will. It sucks having a single bully with a power of 40 million power in a kingdom that's barely 28 days old. That sucks. Bullies suck, man. I don't know what the answer is. The kingdom has to either realize that they're being bullied and unite against them. Or, I mean, what I've seen is that a lot of people rally behind the bully because they think that aggressiveness and and throwing around strength somehow is a, a sign of real power. And, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, like, might is right in this game. But I just think when KVK comes around, like, yeah, you need some might. But do you not think that diplomacy will matter at all? Like, I, I'm inclined to believe that that will be designed in a manner such that diplomacy is relevant. And I'm just guessing. Okay. Uh, Ink, wow, you have 10,000 AP. That's a lot. Sepia with Julius or Sepia with Charles? Depends on what you're doing. Uh, if you're attacking a city... CPO with Julius is really, really good. If you're in open field, would I change my recommendation? Mm, I don't know. Let me send these to these barbs and think about that. Julius or CPO? CPO with Charles. I like CPO with Charles. I'd probably say CPO with Charles for open field and CPO with Julius for cities. Yeah, I think that's how I do that. Yeah, actually, I that hmm, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the problem with Julius and CPO, no, sorry, with CPO and Charles is that Charles is going to heal you a lot, but with CPO, you get a lot of perks when you're low on units. I don't know. Maybe you just don't care about that. It seems like it might be a little bit of anti-synergy, but maybe it's not enough to care. Oh, pop more potions. We're going to... So for those of you who are joining, we are farming barbarians like crazy. And we're farming barbarians like crazy because there's a strategic reserve event and at the same time, a low harsh trial event. This is, this is on my kingdom. It's just insane. So how are we doing on strategic reserve? Even though we did not farm strategic reserve at all, all weekend long, because we were at war, we're in 13th right now, and Lohar's trial, well, there's no rankings, but uh, we are getting so many arrows of resistance, it is magical. So, I don't know, should I send these armies back? I feel like my Boudicca army needs to go back, but the other ones can, can go fight somebody. Go here. That's going to be a while. Let's take a few more questions, and then probably soon I'll head off for the evening and <laughs> make my way to bed. Uh, hey, Chisco, I'm from Kingdom 1180. Pass level one is about to unlock. Can I have some advice on defeating it? Uh, I mean, there's a huge family on the other side. So if the pass is about to unlock, because if it's a new kingdom, and it sounds like it is, then, oh, and defending it. Oh, and defending it, not defeating it. I can read, I swear. Uh, hmm. Advice for defending it. 
you want to have your highest level player, your highest power player with that has good commanders be in there. And the reason I say that is that your tech is one of the biggest differentiators in a garrison defense. And actually, a pass may not even qualify as a garrison. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Holy moly. Infamous Gaming Esports. Yes, it was our leader that dropped 20k to get T5 overnight due to a war. But yeah, it took the Lost Temple in four minutes. That's insane. Totem King. Oh, yes. Totem King means I have a lot of experience tomes. Yes. I used to have a lot of experienced tomes. I don't know that I do anymore. I spent them all leveling up commanders. Well, not all of them, but anyways. Ah, my alliance member is going to beat me to the punch. Ooh, look at that, an El Cid. Don't see that every day. Who's a better archer commander, Herman or Kusunoki? And then who's the better infantry commander, Sun Tzu or Ulji? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. Single targets, it's going to be Ulji. Sun Tzu, multiple targets. And... Better Archer Commander. I I kind of prefer Kusunoki for just the raw damage potential. Is a max CPO good for open field combat? Yes. I like max CPO for open field combat. Uh, holy moly. So many comments. Use Lohar and Minamoto for barb hunting. Unlimited healing. and can play until your AP is burned. I mean, clearly, I've been going for a long time, and I'm having no problems with this unit. Holy, I mean, look at that. They started with, I think, 200. No, it's less than 200,000. And they they started with 198,000, and they have 195,000. So, yeah, that works. That's a combo that's legit. Here's a barb. Ooh, it's even a good barb to kill. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, and let's actually get my... Let's get my archer... Was it archers? I forget what I had here. Oh, I was... See, I'm I'm actually leveling money where my mouth is. I'm leveling CPO right now. I'm leveling CPO right now. There we go. Oops. Hold on. Gotta send in Lohar. Do work, Lohar. By the way, I keep wrecking my bro by sending 25,000 T2 on a city hall. Oh, that's, he's your brother. Come on. Give him a break. Julius with the troop cap bonus would make him better for open field. Yes. Julius is good with the with that troop capacity bonus. I'll say this, though. When your troop count gets low or even middle, you should go back to your city because you've kind of lost the advantage of having a larger army. Does that make sense? It's a really big advantage when your army's nearly full. Chiskul, what's the best special unit? You know, I don't really have a... The, the best special unit is the one that aligns nicely with the kind of commanders you're using. That's what I'll say. There's no one clear winner. I do like the samurai, though. Uh, ooh, Sketchy says, I'm going to go to the altars, have a contest over it. I mean, the altars are worth owning. What is the best farming army? Uh, Lohar and Richard the First can kind of go infinitely, but I like Lohar and Minamoto for speed of killing. Speed of killing is good for farming. Logan, our clan is pretty new, and we put our clan onto your channel to learn. Awesome, dude. I'm so glad to hear that. If you guys have questions, please do leave them in the comments of any of my videos. I respond to almost every single one. At least I try to. It's... That is a hard thing to do, honestly. Do we have more barbs to kill? No. We're just going to wait a minute for them to spawn in. Does CPO and Sun Tzu's damage reduction stack? I think it does. What about Divine Favor, Garrison Trade? I think it all stacks. Uh, Rahul, read a comment in your last vid that Garrison Talents don't work on flags or passes. I'm not sure that they do. And I want to verify before I talk about that. I want to verify. And I am working to verify. I just got to level 10 in a civilization change. Currently China. I should say China or change. What's the best for me? Mm. Wait until the new civilizations come out, which is going to be soon-ish, and then we'll know. 
what I wouldn't change until we know what the new ones do. Can you see my Tao Tao talent tree? Sure, but it's embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing. I was sort of experimenting. He's he's a rally leader uh, for forts. And the reason he's leading my rallies instead of Minamoto, even though my Minamoto is higher level, is because I'm using Minamoto as the primary for PvP, and I always optimize for PvP. Uh, Dallas asking if there's gem hot deposits higher than level 2. I don't think there are. Germany or Spain for a Cav civilization? Uh, wait until the update. I think there will be a new Cav civilization. If you play the game extensively, and I do mean extensively, and I'm one of those players, then I think Spain might be better for the experience boost, but you have to be playing extens really extensively for that to be a thing. Germany is very exceptional, though. Rome is very exceptional as well. Uh, dang, I need Lohar. Dude, you so need Lohar. Get your Lohar going, my friend. Just cool. When KVK comes out, I have to 1v1 Legend Ronnie. Do you know what I would love? Do you know what would be one of my favorite things? Is if Legend Ronnie and I could actually play together. That would be, that would be awesome. I think that would be a lot of fun. <clears throat> How many points do I have? So, oh, you've got 700 points. I assume you're talking about the Cleopatra of 700k? Oh, you're talking about Might? Might I have 18,000, no, 18 million, 137,000, sorry. Uh, is YSG worth going for on the wheel event? If it shows up, yeah, I'm going for it. YSG is on our kingdom, not Richard. Well, there you go. I think it's worth unlocking it because then you can invest in it if you want to. But if you're a very low spend player, then you don't have to invest in it, and that's fine. Uh, Richard has showed up several times, so you can wait on that. And the 30 day gem supply is incredibly good value for something like that. Julius Caesar and Hannibal, good in open field. I think so. Offhand, yes. All right, a couple more minutes, a couple more questions. I'll try to get everyone's questions in. I'm so profoundly. Uh, grateful for everybody showing up with no notice whatsoever. We had at peak, I think over 170 viewers. This is amazing. PUBG mobile. Hey, you're the best rock YouTuber. Thanks, dude. Uh, do you mind responding to some of my questions? First off, I want to know what talent tree would be good for a level 42 Minamoto. Uh, for Minamoto, start with the skill tree, in my opinion, even if you have full calves. Start with the skill tree. The rage regen is just so good. So, so good. Does damage increase on Lohar if you attack a Barbarian Fort? Yes, that damage does apply there, but bar uh, Lohar is really not good for Barbarian Forts. Like, that's not what he's designed for. Why do I say that? I mean, if you look at his skills, the third skill is completely irrelevant, and the fourth skill is completely irrelevant, and the expertise skill is completely irrelevant. So, yeah. Whose skills should I upgrade first on Julius Caesar or at Cao Cao? Well, if you're the person that's leading rallies against player cities, Julius Caesar seems really important. If you're doing open field combat, Cao Cao is really awesome. Best way to max out Richard's skills, suggestion of boxes. Yeah, sure. So if I was doing Richard, you want to max his first skill. And then I took him to 1-1-1. One, one, one. And it's unclear to me if this chivalry set of skills applies only to the garrison or it applies all the time. If it applies all the time, then you would want to max the second skill before the others. But the way I did it is I maxed the first one and then I went one, one, one on all the others and he's so powerful. It's amazing. Did I ever post a rage build for Boudica? Uh, I did do a rage tanking build with Boudica though. No, I don't think so. Let me show you what I'm using for barbarians. This is what I'm doing for Barbarians with Boudica. Skill tree and then Peacekeeping tree. And then I'm working my way to Thoroughbreds because, like, I don't know. I'm tired of waiting. I feel like actually Killer Instinct would be a better first pickup, but I'm having no problem killing the Barbarians as they stand. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Let's see here. Any more Barbs to kill? No? No? All right. Well, 
here's what I think we do, my friends. We've covered a lot of ground. We've been streaming for almost an hour. I'm so appreciative of everybody being here today. I don't always stream, and so to see so much support at the last minute is really incredible. Be on the lookout. I'm going to try to have edited tomorrow the full hour plus long multi uh, pass takeover insanity from my kingdom that resulted in well over 7 million deaths. I mean, it was insane. It, it's almost unbelievable. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.